Uh, if you haven't heard of Visual Studio, it's, uh, it's I'm, I'm hoping you have, but just in case you haven't, it's a ID. Sorry? Hey. Test, hello, hello. Well, that was really loud. <laughs> Buttons push? Okay, cool. So the uh, Visual Studio, it's a ID, makes your life so much easier. It's like the ISC, except um, on all kinds of illness and drugs. Probably not the best comparison, though. However, uh, so there's a whole bunch of things you can do with our tools in Visual Studio. You can go and edit your stuff, run your stuff, debug your stuff, test your stuff with Pester with all the new support that was just announced this morning. Uh, so you can actually you know, remote session in and go and get those scripts, run those, and you integrate and automate Visual Studio itself. Yeah, at first it's starting to sound a little bit like, okay, you've got the ISE, and the ISE is great, uh, but it's a lightweight scenario compared to what we've got in Visual Studio. So, who we are, why we're doing this, uh, this project essentially started from the community. It, one of our MVPs, Adam Driscoll, um, unfortunately couldn't be here today, he started this project, and recently Microsoft has started heavily contributing. In addition, we also have a whole bunch of GitHub contributors, people who are running, testing, sub, uh, submitting pull requests. That could be you. We want you, to, so we want you to help out. Everything that we do is on GitHub. All of our issue tracking, uh, all of our builds, completely transparent. Now, here at Microsoft, we are the Visual Studio, the cloud platform tools. We are part of the Azure tooling group because Azure's, you know, it's getting, getting kind of big and the cloud loves PowerShell. So here we are. So I'm Andre Sayer. Here in the front is Brian. Please buy him a BR3. Eh. Hi, Brian. And now I would like to go straight to the demo because demos are awesome. And, and this microphone is really annoying me. Demo time. Demo, 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 demo. So here we, here we've got Visual Studio, and you've got a little REPL window. You can do hey, um, right host. Yes, I should be using right output, but this is a demo. Hello, and you, and you've got your your. You've got your IntelliSense going, hello, hello, hello. You've got your help. But now let's do something a little bit more interesting. See, I've already created a PowerShell Summit demo project. However, anybody can go create a new project. I'll actually show you what it looks like. So can you just name the one PowerShell code in Visual Studio, or did you have a first step then? Uh, so, sorry? For the most part, yes. It's behind the scenes, we spawn another process and do it, but within the context of Visual Studio, you do not have to leave. Uh, you hit Control, Shift, Slash, or select it from the menu, or debug, or here, I can show you if you go, Alt, File, New Project, doo -doo 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 -doo. all the way down here to PowerShell, and you, where's PowerShell? There it is and you can create a project there. So anything that you want to do within, within standard PowerShell, we're working to make sure it works in Visual Studio. So here, I guess, here's my start here script. Okay. You know, it's, it's just a simple function. I'm not going to go and demo all the features of PowerShell and DSC because actually I'm sure you guys know it a lot better than I do and it is, it is all kinds of awesome. Okay, I'm just start start off typing here, and we start to add a you know some editor goodies, make life a little bit easier. Yeah, if I can type that is this this file dot do 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 do. Now I go here. We're keeping all the indentation for you. We've got all this lovely colorization. Do do do. I'll scroll down and retype this for you so you can see, hey, we're actually, we're actually going through and browsing my uh, file system here. Demo stuff, yay. And I'm going to F5 so you can see, oh, we're actually running it. Hi, 
we've got our files, we've got, we've got length. This is just the example that's in the ISE for colorization testing. Uh, now, the tools before Microsoft started getting involved, they're great, but they only supported 32-bit scenarios. So no DSC, no Office, no SharePoint. Our changes have fixed that. You get all of your lovely squiggles and errors in DSC. You get uh, you get all of your your standard IntelliSense. Everything you could ever ever hope for in uh, in your editor. I will not run that for now because that's nothing terribly exciting. So you know, okay, very similar to ISE. What's next? So let's just start off here with a, uh, oh, yes. Sorry, where, where are we getting this extension? Huh? Oh, I will get, I will get to that because, <coughs> should I announce that? Actually, as of right now, um, the button has been pushed. It is on aka.ms slash get dash posh tools. As of right now, it's on the Visual Studio extension gallery. You could also download it directly from GitHub. In when build comes out next week and you've got new versions of Visual Studio 2015 and the update preview, uh, it will be, it won't quite be in Visual Studio, but it'll be the next best thing. You cannot miss it. There'll be a redirection template and I'll show that to you a little bit later in this presentation. So let's just say you have this um, incredibly long file. It's got a whole bunch of functions. You, you just forgot where you were, you lost track. You were writing at three in the morning, I've done that too many times. And you know, you, you like Queen songs, but uh, you, know, you, you wanted uh, Mr. Brightside. So here, we're, we just go, we can select all of these. These are updated in real time. Oh, hey, we are right here. I'm gonna go back to my uh, find directions function. There it is. Let's see now. Now, this is all within a PowerShell script, a PowerShell script project, which is good, but there are many other scenarios where you need PowerShell. When you're deploying out to Azure, when you're running something on your local machine, uh, when you just want to make life easier for yourself. That's what PowerShell is for, right? So we have a just a simple console application. Again, this could be this could be anything. This is you know, your deployment to Azure Resource Manager, deployment anywhere. We've got this lovely script here. And I have made it, uh, I've made this script to automate Visual Studio itself just a little bit. So if you're not familiar with Visual Studio, there's a root object. It's called the DTE object. I hit. Uh, if I bring up the IntelliSense, you can edit anything within the editor. Go, run, change, any command you could ever think of. I'm not going to type up an entire, entire script for you there. I'll make it easier. You know, here's something simple. And right click, execute a script, and away it goes. It'll output any um, uh, any C sharp documents that are currently open. I've got a whole bunch open. I'll close that out. We can come back to that in a little bit. But let's see. Let me go over to my debug example. Now, this is where Visual Studio starts to shine. The debugger is, I'd, I'd say, it's the best in the world. Now, I'm a little bit biased, so. You know, how about I show you? I will hit F5. And I've already set a breakpoint here. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll hang out. We can inspect all the local variables and see as they change in as they change in real time. I'll just step over, step over, la la. la. We can go and hover. Oh, hey, um, I is currently one. A is one. This, this is just this is some of our test code to show you that everything that that you could ever dream of just mostly works. Yes? Um, the, when you said a breakpoint in Visual Studio, is that equivalent to what PowerShell considers a breakpoint inside of its own like, internal debugger? That's, that's correct. Uh, question. Oh, so, so the question was, are Visual Studio breakpoints 
essentially the same as the breakpoints that you can set in PowerShell? And the answer is yes. Uh, depending on which version of PowerShell you're on, um, 3.0 or 4.0 and up, it will do things a little bit differently, but it's the exact same underlying mechanism. Uh, the red dot will not show up in Visual Studio if you're typing it in at the moment, but that's a great suggestion, and I would encourage you to post on on the GitHub. Okay. Mm. Good question on where this is available. So I'm logged into Express version of Visual yeah. Studio. Will this work with Express, or is it limited to Unity and some of the other? Uh, so right now, it is limited. Oh, well, of course. Uh, the question was. The, this extension, where is it available? Can you run it on the Express U? Unfortunately, it can only run on Pro and Up and Community and Up. Uh, so there are solutions with the integrated shell, but they aren't officially supported. It is open source, and have at it. <laughs> can you give us the URL again? A -K -A -M -S. Oh, of course. aka.ms get dash posh p tools, P-O-S-H-T-O-L-S. You. You're quite welcome. Did we can search in the gallery too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can also search in the Visual Studio extension gallery. So let's, let's see as I, where's my mouse? Come back, mouse. So you can also go and view all the properties of your more complex objects. You can pin this if you just want to keep it around. Actually, I don't want to keep that around, that's annoying. Uh, continue down, you know, any kinds of uh, any any kinds of functions. Now, we've got we've defined this function add one. Again, uh, on its own looks normal. However, I can hit uh, I can hit F11, and it'll step into add one. This is inside a completely different file. This is inside our PSM1 file. And continue on, F10. Oh, here, let me, let me scroll down here, and you can see where we are with X and Y, and everything changing. One and two, it's gonna continue to be one and two. One and two, and hit F11. Now, I, this goes on for, for a while. So our, I've already set a breakpoint within a add six function. As you can guess, it's six layers down. Hit F5. And let's see, oh, I want to view a call stack. Where are we here? What are all of our variables here at this stage? What about here? What about here? What about back where we were originally? Oh, I want to scroll up, what was R again? That was this, that, and the other thing. And I'll go back, I'll F10 again. And we'll continue along, uh, along back up the stack. Oh, here's our interactive window. It is quite interactive here. Dollar X. Dollar Y. Dollar I cannot type. Continue on. Now, another feature that we recently added was. It's, it's equivalent to remote session support, but we've made it, we've made it our own and added a couple of niceties. I'm going to add, I'm going to connect to one of the, my remote machines, uh, the original ARM tablet. Uh, Andre, say, potato. There, we'll give this a moment for it to, for it to connect. Do, 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 do. Yo, yes, what's up? Just going back to the debugging, can you set a breakpoint on, on when a variable changes? Uh, the question was, can you set a breakpoint on when it changes? So uh, at the moment, we, uh, we cannot, but we do have a task open to handle that in GitHub. We, cool. have, uh, we, we have that on the hopeful, hopeful backlog as well as conditional breakpoints. There's a whole bunch of things that we can do and that we want to do. Oh, it's on this monitor. Okay. <laughs> right, so. 
His password is something, something, something. Oops. Ah. Okay, now, now we'll actually let it, let it connect. I forgot I have this giant weirdo screen here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, so here we are. We have connected to Andre Say Potato. You can see that it's actually a it's actually a real machine. I'm not, you know, just changing the prompt on ya. Installer in the computer name. Aha, we are connected to Andre Say Potato. What is in this directory? We've got this lovely example1.ps1. Um, I think I, I kind of want to view it, and we're still improving this experience, but we are going to, this is going to look a little bit familiar. Uh, example that, oops. Example that PS1. So this is gone, this is downloaded the script automatically for you, and open it up in the editor. Now, what's even better, I can go like this, Set our breakpoint and F5. Do, 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 do. It has to go over the wire, talk to wherever my this VM lives in La La Land. And we have the same great debugging experience that you would expect on a local machine except on a remote machine. Right host. And we've got hello from Andre State Potato. Well, not actually. Click. Now, before I continue on, I wanted to I wanted to ask you guys, what do you want to see out of these tools? Because you know, we we've got our ideas, but I, I want to know what you guys think. That's why that's why we're here. Yes. F12? Okay, that, yeah, that is an awesome, awesome feature that we want. <laughs> a console that you can pop out, like be able to pop out the console to another window. You mean like that? Yeah, just like that. All right, perfect. That, 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 was, that was really easy. <laughs> and, and any other easy ones, or hard ones as well? I have a question. Do you need more than one? Uh, no, well, not currently, but I'd like more than one. I've seen it was a feature request for the I. <laughs> Does it have the refactor features? Uh, not, uh, not yet. What type of refactoring are you looking for? More than just rename? Function name or parameter name? Mm -hmm. you know, it, if you use like C sharp, you, know, you can change some of that stuff and it'll go to your project and kind of redo it. Yes. No, uh, that would be all kinds of awesome. And we have the capability to do it. Uh, yeah, definitely say all this stuff on GitHub as well because I don't know, the, the, the more involvement that we see, it's like, hey, we, want, we see people who want this feature, we'll definitely work on that, because that's what you guys want. <laughs> Simple as that. So let's see here, what can I do in this interactive? Okay. What up? Oh, yes. Does it have any of the, the auto styling, like the C Sharp will automatically adjust your, your spacing and your tabs and all of that? Oh, we do have a little bit of that. Uh, let me bring up an example. So we have a basic um, parentheses, uh, parentheses and brace completion. So it'd be like function, blah, or function, there, type once, type once again. We also have a smart indentation, blah, 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 for each um, dollar foo in dollar bar. Press enter, duh. and we've already indented it automatically for you. Yeah, it's it's a lot of these little things that make it life easy. Yo. Can, can you uh, can it help us make forms so we can you know hand off <laughs> So do you follow um, Adam on Twitter at all? Oh, uh, it's funny that you asked that. So Adam, the MVP, is actually working on that very feature. Um, he had just posted out to YouTube a form designer for, for PowerShell. Can you tell him to hurry? 
I'll, I'll, I'll make sure he, he gets the message. <laughs> you, you can log in and tell him. <laughs> are, are you looking for like win form forms, uh, XAML forms? It's just something that I've had requests from some of our developers are like, hey, you know, if you gave me the PowerShell code, I can wrap it up in a nice dialogue. It's something. Why is it so hard to do? So mm -hmm. Is it would be nice to just build something really nice with just give me a text field and a button and. They just want UI? Yeah. And yeah, you have parameter catcher or data catcher or something like that. Something. Yeah. Cool, cool. And we've got a little bit of time, so before I continue on with the PowerShell stuff, I wanted to yeah, stop being a multiple window. I wanted to sneak a couple moments and show you a little bit of the behind the scenes. Do, 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 do. Can you auto sign code on a I haven't done anything specific to that. If if you can do it in PowerShell, you can in you can in Visual Studio. Could you do it in both places? Hmm? Yeah, is are you looking for uh, something where it will uh, automatically sign your PowerShell modules and scripts or something yeah. else? What he wants to be able to do is catch the save and then run a script on the save file. If you can create a hook, and uh, if you want to do it right now, you could create a hook on that uh, lovely DTE object that, uh, that I showed you, and then you can catch save events there. Uh, but that's good for you to make it, that's not a very user-friendly way to, to do that. So uh, you're imagining something where, uh, as Jeffrey said, you, you hit save and just automatically signs it? Uh, save you can do that. Okay, cool. Well, we will definitely look into that and as well post on GitHub so everybody else can add their, uh, add their thoughts and votes and all that good stuff. Let's see. No. Stop being noisy. So one of the nice things about being entirely on GitHub is that it forces our build process to be very, very simple, uh, just internally. So if you do want to contribute, you just download our project uh, with the Visual Studio SDK and just hit F5 and run. And life is nice. You don't have to worry about some magic build voodoo stuff. So in theory, I could Added a added a feature in these couple minutes. So what's happening behind the scenes, as you see the PowerShell host being initialized, is that we are creating a whole nother process. Uh, this process that we created, which is a 64-bit process. Visual Studio is a 32-bit process, hence why the original iteration of these tools had this, uh, had this limitation. After we, create a process, after we create that new process, any of the commands that, uh, that we type into the REPL window, for example, uh, all of the IntelliSense, it goes over the wire and via standard inner process communication. Little tiny peek behind the curtain because I think it's cool. Anyways, back to back to just standard demo-y stuff. So here were some of the the future plans, not promises, etc. That we that we were thinking of. Uh, I, we didn't want to uh, poison the pool before we got a bunch of your ideas. So some of the stuff that we want to do, we want to do uh, F12, the go to definition. We want to have script formatting and refactoring. And we're also looking at remote, uh, some of the new PowerShell v5 features around remote debugging, where you can attach to a existing, uh, an existing PowerShell script, which is already right. And for those who are creating their commandlets in C Sharp or VB.net, uh, so mixed mode debugging, so you can just F11 straight into, into your C Sharp code, for example. And we're also looking at a improved interactive, yes, I, this might have even been in there already. Is snippets available on there? Like in the ISD? 
Uh, not yet, no. But uh, so we are currently uh, looking looking at uh, the same type of ISC snippets or so, what other yeah, types of like, snippets? Yeah, you know, right click and you can say, you know, start snippets. I want to, I'm going to do an advanced function, you know, and it spits out all of the, you know, like kind of like a nice framework to go off and just mm -hmm. save some type. Visual Studio's got snippet support. We haven't implemented it for PowerShell yet, but that would be that would definitely be a good feature to have. We've uh, actually had a number of requests from Polk on how to on easy ways to just get started. Things like snippets and potentially some DSC templates. Uh, you know, hello world type of scenarios. Let's see. We also have uh, on the backlog an improved interactive experience, so that way we can match the PowerShell ISC and PowerShell console, uh, things like profile support and color in the REPL window, because I really want to be able to use uh, Posh Git within Visual Studio. So uh, originally we were going to plan to announce it at this moment, but we did about uh, 15 minutes earlier. The acquisition is you go to you go to that link and download it. It's just a v6. Yes, you do need admin uh, admin permissions, but after you download, you just launch Visual Studio and you've got it. If you don't, after uh, people who get later version of Visual Studio, they'll get one of these lovely notifications. So if they open up a PowerShell file and they don't have and they don't have a tools, hey, PowerShell tools are now available. You should go get them. Even if they didn't open one, they'll get that little flag and notification, hey, you should go get PowerShell tools. And inside uh, the new project dialog, we tell them to go get the PowerShell tools. We're, we're, we're being obnoxious about it in the best of ways. <laughs> and let's see, that's the end of all the demos. And do you guys have any other, any other questions? Yes. Uh, so the question was, what are the performance implications about uh, doing it in uh, essentially out of process uh, as part of this Visual Studio chain instead of in PowerShell itself? Uh, from the actual script perspective, you're not getting any performance hit outside of just running it in, uh, if you might run as 64-bit versus 32-bit. Uh, the, in an interactive type of session, there will be a small but nothing that we've noticed the uh, human to be able to notice uh, latency just because it has to do additional processing going to and from. We've done, we've done quite a bit of work around making sure the editor is very responsive. Oh, go for it. Right now, it is currently supported on Visual hmm? Oh, right. Uh, so <laughs> I, I keep forgetting that. I, I need like a, a little sign or a blinker. We, we could have used that, uh, that whiteboard thingy. Uh, so the question was, what versions of Visual Studio is it supported on? Like Visual Studio 2013, 2015, and so forth. Of course, we're going to support 2015. It hasn't come out yet completely. Uh, it's going to support 2013. Um, internally, we call it Dev 12. Uh, there have been some requests to support Visual Studio 2000 and 2012 or Dev 11 because I can't cannot keep track of the mapping in my head. Uh, right now, it does not it does not work out of the box on Visual Studio 2000 and 2012, but uh, Adam is actually investigating as we speak to see if it's to see if it's feasible. Are you on a? Are you tied to a current version? <laughs> One of my clients were using 2008. 2008. I. It all depends the environment that I'm working in, but um, in in house I'm on 2012. Okay, I don't. Chances of it going back to 2008 are kind of slim. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I won't hold my breath. <laughs> The question was, the question was, 
when new features, new debugging features in PowerShell light up, like with version five, uh, will they automatically light up within, within our tools? And the answer to that is it depends. For some of the new features such as uh, the remote debugging or attached to a currently running script, we're going to need to add some new functionality. For anything that, like things like bug fixes or things that currently hook into the existing, the existing PowerShell run edit breakpoints, those will just work automatically. We currently support, you know, PowerShell v3 and up, so we need to make sure that works and uh, all versions going forward. Cool, uh, any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Brian, you look like you want to comment, or you want? What was the question? So going to Azure and, and other stuff with PowerShell is that going to be there as well, just like other uh, studio projects. So the question was, uh, can you deploy to um, other Azure projects using the PowerShell stuff? Is that correct? Correct. Uh, so for things like the Azure Resource Manager tools, it creates a it creates a PowerShell deployment script within Visual Studio. You right click. Deploy and it runs the script just as if you ran it from the command line. So if, if there's a PowerShell script generated which deploys, then yep, automatically. That was actually one of the main scenarios that we were targeting. Cool. And with, unless anybody has any other questions, here is the latest chunk of information. You can go. Uh, you can go get the latest on the gallery or go and check out our GitHub because we, we want you guys to contribute and it'll be awesome and cool and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll show the, we're going to show the rest of Microsoft how to, how, how to do open source. Button. Is it off? Is it dead? <laughs>